In this video, we are going to be creating a RDS database. To achieve this, ensure that you log into your console and you want to take note of the region that you are in, right? This is important because you want to ensure that whenever you are creating resources that will interact with each other, they are basically in the same region. So from the search, you can search for RDS, right? And then you'll see RDS Manage Relational Database Services pops up. Or in my case, I could access it from the recently visited. So I'm going to select RDS here. Then select Create Database. Here by default, Standard Create is selected and Postgres is selected, right? I'm going to go over the steps with the Standard Create. However, I'm just going to come back and select Create Easy because in the production environment, you'll go through the Standard Create option, most likely, right? So from here, you can choose your engine. I'll be keeping the default. It goes up to 15.3. The version doesn't matter for now. For the templates, I can choose between production, dev test, or free tier. So I'm going to select free tier. For the settings, here you can choose your database identifier. I will be calling this Udemy. It will be combined with some additional string to make your database endpoint name. This is what you'll be using to connect your database. Here we have the credentials. The default user is Postgres. You can change the name. Postgres is fine. You can also manage the master credential in your AWS secret manager. This would be ideal in a production scenario. However, for this course, you don't want to enable this because we want to ensure that we are capitalizing on the free tier. You can auto generate a password or you can specify your own master password. I will be setting my master password. Scroll down for instance configuration. Here is where you get to choose your database class. If you're doing a production, you, you would be able to choose from the standard classes, memory optimized classes and burstable classes, right? But because it's a free tier, we are only allowed to choose from the burstable classes. And when we select the drop down, you'll see that you only have two options, which we discussed earlier, db.t3.micro and the db.t4.micro. These will allow you to capitalize on the free tier. When you scroll down, you have the option to select your storage class. And again, you'll see the options we discussed previously. The general purpose, the provision IOPS, and the magnetic. Those are the three different types. Now, under the general purpose, you have the GP2, and then you have the GP3 SSD. I will be keeping the default here for the allocated storage. This is the initial size that will be allocated to the database. The minimum amount is 20 gigabytes. Now, you can enable auto scaling. This will be ideal in a production scenario because if you don't enable auto scaling, and your database reach to the maximum size of 20 gigabytes, then your application will halt and nothing else can be written to your database. However, for this course, you want to uncheck the auto scaling because what if something mysteriously happens and your database grow to over 20 gigabytes, then guess what? You'll be charged for that. Now for the maximum storage threshold is the maximum size that your database will auto scale to. You can set the maximum to 6144 gigabyte and a minimum of 22 gigabyte. We don't need this option, so we're going to uncheck that, right? Now, for the connectivity, you can use EC2 as a compute resource, right? So, EC2 is basically a server in AWS, right? So, the EC2 stands for Elastic Cloud Compute. So, we don't want to connect to an EC2 instance. For the virtual private cloud, we're going to keep the default. Same thing for the database subnet. And for the public access, right, you don't want to enable public access. However, when we select Easy Create, it will switch it back to No, but I will show you how to change it later on. For the existing VPC, the default is fine. For the availability zone, it will be auto selected, so no preference is fine. For the RDS proxy, we're not going to enable that for now. For the certificate authority, we can leave the default. And for the database authentication, we're going to keep password authentication. For the monitoring and insight, we're going to uncheck this one now, right? And here you'll see an estimate of what your database will cost you. Now for additional configuration, you can specify an initial database that you want to be created. And the default DB parameter group will be created. You'll learn more about the parameter groups later on, right? So do we want to enable automated backups? For now, we can 
uncheck this we want to keep encryption on for the rest of the configuration the default would be fine however i'm going to switch it back to the easy create option so we don't incur any costs so i'm just going to switch to easy create now let's scroll down and you'll see that there is no cost associated with the easy create option now when you look at an overview of the instance you'll see all the configuration that will be made note particularly like i've mentioned before the public access will be set to no and i'll show you how to change this later on in this course right so let's select create and your database will take a few minutes to create so for the add-ons for the database instance we can select close we don't want that right now this will take about five to ten minutes to complete so the database creation has been completed to get an overview of your database select the database identifier and it will take you to the overview page right so here you can find your connectivity and security settings your monitoring tab your logs and events your configuration your maintenance and backup right all of this cool stuff in the next lecture we're going to be taking a look at how you can start stop and modify your instance